Hamilton Morris, Chief Communications Officer for the City of Des Moines. We are on location at the new DART Central Station in downtown Des Moines. And with this new station comes some improvements in services and some things you need to know about. We'll visit with Gunnar Olson, who is the Public Affairs Manager for DART, and we're going to take a little tour. So stay tuned. City Talk will be right back. We are on location today at the new DART Central Station located at 620 Cherry Street in downtown Des Moines. The new station replaces that old transit mall on Walnut Street and this is the primary place for boarding, transferring or getting off the bus. Here to tell us about the new station is Gunnar Olson who is the Public Affairs Manager for DART. Gunnar, thank you for being our guest. Well, thanks for having us. Okay. This is a beautiful building. Tell us about the basics, what services are housed here. Uh, Dart Central Station is the new primary transfer point for the entire Dart system. Uh, so the most f important piece for the operations of the building are the 15 platforms where the buses come into and out of the station off of 6th Avenue and 7th Street. Uh, we're just south of Cherry Street. Uh, and so those platforms all have covered canopies, uh, so uh, passengers are protected from the elements as they get on and off the bus. Mm -hmm. There are also digital signs out there uh, showing the next departure time so that people know when they're leaving. Mm -hmm. One of the other great features is those platforms are all labeled so people know when they are leaving. And I can take you on a tour if you want and we can show you some of those features. But some of the other major features here are customer service window. You'll notice that the old Walnut Street Transit Mall did not have a place where people could go talk to customer, customer service representatives. Mm -hmm. Now they can. Uh, they can not only ask questions of the uh, customer service representatives, but they can also buy bus passes, etc. Uh, there are also indoor waiting areas, public restrooms, a lot of amenities that seem simple but are a huge improvement over the old Walnut Street Transit Mall. Wow, that's that's true. Because when you come in here, you see the first thing with the weather we're having, you notice is there's a warm place to wait for the bus. And I did not notice there wasn't a customer service window, but it makes perfect sense because you need that. But it wasn't available on Walnut Street. No, you would think it would be very obvious, and, and you know that's something that was uh, severely lacking. And in fact, yeah. for the last several years, there wasn't a place to buy bus passes downtown. Uh, it was a major hole in yeah. you know our service. Uh, and so with the new station, not only do you have a warm place to wait inside, but you do have access to bus passes, schedules, and customer service staff who can answer all your questions. Big improvement. Um, how much did it cost? This is a huge building. It stretches an entire block from 6 to 7 on Cherry Street. How much did it cost to build? Dart Central Station is a, approximately a $21 million facility, mm -hmm. uh, and it was funded primarily through grants. Uh, there are three pieces of grant funding. The first is a $4 million iJobs grant. The second piece is a $6.5 million grant from the Federal Transit Administration's Bus and Bus Facilities Program. Okay. And then the final $10 million piece came through the U.S. Department of Transportation's Tiger II grant program. So all combined, it was approximately a $21 million project. Okay, so I mean, all of that is some form of tax dollars. So, does that mean local community, local taxpayers uh, did not contribute to the DART uh, station? Uh, local tax dollars do contribute to uh, DART's operations, and there is an ongoing cost to operating it, but really, their biggest contribution is running the buses. Approximately a third of DART's operating budget is supported by property tax dollars. The other two-thirds of DART's operating budgets come approximately from, you know, roughly, you know, roughly thirds, uh, but the other thirds are fares, um, which include cash fares on the bus, mm -hmm. passes, as well as partnerships that we have with local businesses. Mm -hmm. And then the final third is state and federal funding. Well, that's great. That's great to hear. Um, what about the hours of operation? Now that the, uh, the entire station is enclosed, what are the hours of operations here? Uh, very roughly, there are 6.30 to uh, about 10 o'clock. Okay. And what about the improvements? What, what changed here with the service with this new building? The biggest change is, of course, the ability to have indoor waiting for your transfers. The, same, the system still works where the, the buses will all converge downtown, and that's the opportunity for people to get from 
one bus to another, uh, allowing them to go from one part of the town to another. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the really the biggest change is it just makes it a much better experience for making those transfers. So someone who may not have been interested in making a transfer before may be more inclined to do so now. Do all of the DART buses come into the central station, uh, including those who service the surrounding communities? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, but let me back up and give you the bigger picture. DART offers a trio of services. Mm -hmm. The first is, and the first most visible are, are the fixed route buses. Okay. Uh, but there are also paratransit vehicles um, that help people with disabilities, yes. for example, um, as well as rideshare vans. We have uh, 93 van pools on the road right now um, that take people in and out of the city. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of DART services that don't necessarily come here. Uh, mostly, DART Central Station is, is for the fixed route operations, which is to say a bus that runs on a regular pattern with a regular schedule. Okay. Among the fixed route buses, there are two basic categories. Uh, one is the local routes, and that's going through the city with regular stops um, and the running all day long. Those buses all stop at DART Central Station, and those are the buses, those buses um, come in out of the platforms here, and a lot of people use them for transfers here. Mm -hmm. Now, the express routes are commuter type services. They run predominantly between the suburbs and downtown mm -hmm. and from downtown to the suburbs, taking people back and forth from the jobs, whether they're living downtown and working in the suburbs mm -hmm. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Those buses try to get in and out of downtown very quickly. And for that reason, they circulate on Grand and Locust and they do not come all the way to the station. Okay. Now, we hear from people who are concerned about being able to make transfers, and there are still transfer opportunities, but those occur at the where Grand and Locust intersect 6th and 7th, uh, because we, oh, we have our two, a lot of our, our 6th and 7th are now the major northwest corridors mm -hmm. through the downtown area, which makes sense given, you know, that Dar Central Station is sandwiched between those two streets. Uh, and so where they intersect with Grand and Locust, there are opportunities to transfer from, all, from the local routes to the express routes. So there are still ways to transfer between those two. Okay. What is the, um, if we can put a number on it, what is the ridership on the bus system? Here the Last year totaled about 4.6 million total rides. Uh, on our fixed route buses, uh, we see a daily average of about 15,000. Now that's a weekday, non-holiday. Wow, that is a lot. That's a lot of service. Um, let's talk a little bit about the building itself. A lot of planning went into the design phase of this building. I'm curious, did you have an opportunity for public input? There were committees that were put in place uh, to help with some of the decisions about site location, what, what it needed. Um, there were also steps where we would take design, uh, design uh, suggestions to uh, the Transit Riders Advisory Committee. DART has a committee of 13 riders uh, and they exist primarily to review some of the projects that we're working on and give us feedback um, as they're reaching implementation. Uh, so one of the examples actually is uh, the Transit Riders Advisory Committee helped us narrow down and ultimately select the name of the new facility. Um, when, okay. we were, when we were applying for grant funding, it was the, multi, the Sustainable Multimodal Transit Hub, uh, okay. which is a real mouthful. Yes. Um, but, so they helped us come up with Dark Central Station, which was simple and easily understood as a, trans, as a transit facility. Well, my vote goes with them. I, I like that a lot. Uh, I understand that the building had some energy efficient saving or some energy saving features. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, the certification isn't complete yet because it takes a while to get the actual certification. Uh, that being said, the station is designed to be lead uh, gold or better wow. uh, through the U.S. Green Building Council. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the features that have been incorporated into the facility for that are uh, there's solar technology built into the central canopy mm -hmm. uh, on the pl bus platforms that you know kind of augments our power usage. Really. There are 70 geothermal wells underneath the, underneath the facility, and that helps heat and cool the facility. Um, another interesting feature is that we collect uh, rainwater in a giant cistern underneath the ground. 
uh, and that is used to flush toilets. And then you can also access that with like a hose connection out on the platform so you can hook up a power washer to wash the bus platforms. Uh, and so our, the savings in water usage are going to be very huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not only environmentally friendly, but also uh, saves us a substantial amount of money. Wow, that is a lot. Uh, for those of you um, who don't know, LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And as you said, the U.S. Uh, Green Building Council. And basically, it's a certification that people get because they build smart buildings, in a nutshell, that are energy efficient and good for the environment, which is what DART has done here. And so we felt it was very important to make a statement with the building of being LEED certified because public transit is itself a very green form of transportation. Sharing rides, of course, is much more economical and environmentally friendly uh, than everyone driving by themselves. And so we felt it important as a green alternative transportation to build a station that was sim symbolic of that. Not to mention what you save on the gasoline, the cost of gasoline in, in your private cars going back and forth every day. So that's a substantial savings. Um, I can see how the services have changed, but just thinking about your old location and the new location, so all of the offices and everything that was housed at the old DART Central Station, all of that is here now? Uh, no. We went from one primary location for staff and operations to two locations for staff and, off and operations. So DART is maintaining its office or its facility at 1100 DART Way, uh, and that's where we have all of our maintenance operations. Okay. Uh, all of our buses are regularly maintained, cleaned, okay. washed, um, and they're also stored in garages overnight uh, so that they're easy to start in the morning and there's not piles of snow on them in the winter. Um, and so we're maintaining 1100 Dart Way as our operations and maintenance facility. Okay. Um, and so a lot of our operations staff and supervisors, dispatchers, that is all still being housed there. The new DART Central Station does incorporate office space, and there's a lot of the administrative functions, particularly the people who have regular interaction with, you know, people outside, you know, other businesses, uh, people such as yourself, mm -hmm. um, who've moved their offices here. So general manager and her staff, finance, human resources, the planning department, and marketing and communications. They have all have their staff here, along with customer service, as well as our rideshare program. Okay, well, that's, that's wonderful. Um, I'd like to see the building. We're going to show everyone the, the new building, but first we're going to take a, a quick break. Um, and then we're going to come back, and of course, Gunner is going to take us on a little walking tour of the Central Station. Uh, but don't go away. Stay with us. We're going to be right back after this message. vendor space at Dart Central Station and this uh, this space was intentionally left vacant and the idea here is that we'll have a business come in and set up shop so while the space is ours the business is going to be run independent uh, and the idea is they might have a coffee shop or a sandwich shop or some sort of service that would cater to the thousands of people who come through here on a daily basis uh, and as you see we're in close proximity to uh, Court Avenue and the courthouse. Uh, we're also in close proximity to the uh, growing residential uh, yeah. area to this just on the, the south of downtown. There okay. are several lofts mm -hmm. uh, that are right around here. So we think it's going to be a very great location uh, to serve not only the people who are using uh, DART but also people who are walking past here and conducting their business in the area. Okay, let's continue. We are standing in the secure bicycle storage facility. Uh, and as the name implies, this is a place where people can bring their bicycles and store them in one of these racks. What you're looking at here uh, in the stainless steel are um, racks that you can put your bike on and lock up securely. And this whole room is behind closed, locked doors. Uh, and if you were to become a member of this program, you'd be issued a ID badge that you can use to access the doors with your bike. Um, the, there's an initial $50 deposit that gets you your access pass, and then there's an ongoing annual fee of $50. So it'd be $100 to start, but just a $50 ongoing annual fee. 
and uh, the first $50 is refundable. Uh, but the real benefit here is you have a safe, secure place to leave your bike while downtown. Uh, so for example, uh, someone who might want to uh, have a nice hard uh, bike ride after work uh, but doesn't want to get sweaty beforehand uh, can take the bike their bike down on the bus, leave it here, and then after work they can change into their, their bike clothes here in one of the changing stations and then uh, get their bike ride in on their way home. Well, we are standing in the primary waiting area at Dart Central Station. Uh, they're seating for a little more than 70 people and standing room for that many more. Uh, this is one of the biggest improvements over the former Walnut Street Transit Mall and it allows people to wait indoors for the bus um, and then you can see that there are uh, TV screens mounted up on the walls. Those show the routes, what platforms they're leaving from at the station, and the time of the next departure. Uh, so people use those, they can sit in the waiting room, look at the screens, and know when their bus is leaving. So that they can wait indoors, uh, you know, up until a minute or two before their bus leaves. Area Regional Transit Authority, DART as we all call it, offers a complete family of transportation services that provide access to jobs, schools, and the Greater Des Moines or Central Iowa area. One of those services is the park and ride and the ride share. Gonna tell us a little bit about those because those kind of impact those outlining communities outside of the Des Moines area. Yeah. Obviously, as you know, Des Moines and Greater Des Moines is a major employment center for the entire central Iowa region. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we try to offer as many tools as possible to make it possible or make it uh, affordable and convenient for people to uh, connect to jobs uh, in downtown Des Moines and elsewhere throughout the metro uh, that they might not otherwise be able to afford to get to. Mm -hmm. Um, and two of those services that you mentioned are the park and rides and the ride share program. Mm -hmm. A park and ride is, as its name suggests, a place that has been, that we've worked out with a property owner mm -hmm. where customers can park their vehicles and then catch a bus. Uh, so for example, there's a park and ride at the Dolls at 156th Street out in Clive, way out on the west side. Uh, and you can catch Route 92 there and be taken all the way downtown. So a lot of people might drive a mile or a couple miles and get there, and then they don't have to worry about uh, the traffic in downtown, nor do they have to worry about paying for or messing with parking. And there are a lot of people who take advantage of that, not only for the cost savings, but also uh, because the, they just enjoy the experience so much better. Well, I hear from a lot of people who enjoy reading on the bus, and they're much yes. more relaxed. So the other service that you mentioned is the rideshare program, and that's the local name for uh, a van pooling program. So kind of like carpooling, but using a van. Mm -hmm. The van is furnished by Dart, uh, and then there's a van driver who's a customer, um, and a backup driver, and then anywhere from four to five to eight, you know, people who all meet mm -hmm. and take the van in together. And we have 92 vans currently operating. Uh, with some 900 people coming in from places as far as away as, you know, near the Missouri border uh, every day making that trip. Wow. Uh, and so it's a really affordable way for people to get to these jobs uh, who would otherwise be spending atrocious amounts of money on gasoline. Okay, now the van that you own, that these people use, um, at the end of every day, this van goes back to where and it they pick the van up from where? How does exactly does that work? Well, each van pool has a designated driver. Okay. And that driver is basically the custodian of the van. It's dark property, but the, the driver takes care of it. Okay. Um, and it's an added responsibility, and so there are some perks to being a driver of one of those vans, uh, including some, use, some personal use of it, mm -hmm. um, but then also they don't pay a fare. Mm -hmm. uh, so by fulfilling the role of the driver, that is their payment. Uh, and so the vans stay with the drivers and uh, go home with them. And then the driver is essentially the leader of that van pool and helps coordinate the pickups and drop-offs and all that. Give me an example. What communities are using the vans? You have 92 of them just off the top of your head. What communities are using those? 
Uh, some of the biggest, uh, well, Ames, for example, Newton, uh, you know, I think that the Ames to Des Moines is, is one of the biggest users. Yeah, I bet that that's a that's probably got a couple of vans going oh, each yeah. way. I, I've worked with people from there. All right, well, let, let's move on. That's very interesting. I didn't know that, so you learn something every day. Um, as a regional service, um, we know you serve most of central Iowa, but can you kind of go down the list of what communities, because you've mentioned some communities a little further out that I had no idea died service. Well, if it's right with you, I'll just read off the list in that's, alphabetical order. We've got uh, Ankeny, Altoona, Allman, Bondurant, uh, Carlisle, Clive, Des Moines, of course, Elkhart, Granger, Grimes, Johnston, Mitchellville, Pleasant Hill, Polk City, Runnels, Urbandale, Windsor Heights, West Des Moines. So pretty well the entire Polk County. Uh, now they have varying degrees of service depending on where they are in the county and what demand there is for services. So you know at the core of the city you have a lot of local routes. The farther you get out to some of the suburbs you have uh, more express routes geared primarily toward workday commuters. Mm -hmm. um, and then the farther out you have uh, on-call services, so you might have uh, a bus service available to you once or twice a week uh, to allow, for example, a senior to go get groceries. Okay. Um, do all of these communities in some way contribute to the DART service? Yes. As, as I mentioned earlier, DART is supported, its operating budget is supported by uh, state and federal funding, fares, which account for approximately a third, and then a third for property taxes. So. A so yes, through property taxes, DART is supported by all the member communities. Most of the people, um, most of the local routes are here in downtown Des Moines. What does it cost these days to ride the DART bus? A local route, one-time trip is $1.75, $2 if you're riding an express route, uh, but I'd recommend getting a weekly or a monthly pass because it'll save you in the long run. What about transfers? Is that included in the $1.75? Yes. Uh, you no, know, if you were to get on one route and make a transfer within a couple hours, that is free. DART also had, at least I recall coming by my office, that, that unique service. It was a, a trolley service. Do you still have that? That It made the loop from Grand, I think from the state capitol sure. down to the gateway? You're referring to the D-Line downtown trolley? Yes. Yeah, that was introduced yes. a few years back. Uh, it's been very popular, well received. Um, it is a free service that runs through downtown to get people from destinations back and forth for you know businessmen going on lunches etc mm -hmm. um, and it runs on Grand and Locust between 17th uh, in the Western Gateway and then up to the Capitol. That was such a neat, we use that, uh, I use that Great. going to meetings particularly Good. in the winter time and it's hard to find a place to park you could just get on and come back. Now I'm just curious um, can you use that for special occasions? Can you like rent that trolley since it's so cool? Uh, no. <laughs> it'd make a great party bus. <laughs> okay, well, I tried. I, th I, th I think it's really neat. Let's talk about the, the, you know, when you drive up, or I drove up, I see all of the buses. How many buses, vans, and whatever other vehicles you have, how many vehicles are in the fleet? Well, if we're counting just the 40-foot buses, we currently have a little more than 100. I'd say total vehicles are more closer to 150 excluding uh, the rideshare vans. So, but there are 92 of those. Right. That's a lot. Yep, and we, you service and maintain all of those. Uh, DART staff directly services all the buses, uh, but not directly the rideshare vans. What are some of the, the busiest routes or destinations for DART? I mean, we see the buses downtown. We know that a lot of them converge here, but what are the busiest routes for you? Well, some of the busiest routes are uh, for example, R Route 3 on University Avenue. Uh, and something that we've done is introduced some new services based on some of the corridors where there is the most usage. And the route in particular that I'm talking about is Route 60. Route 60 operates on University and Ingersoll Avenue between 42nd Street and downtown. Um, and it's a new route that we're, we're looking to develop into something called bus rapid transit sometime. It's a train-like service uh, with rubber wheel vehicles. Okay. Um, BRT has been implemented in cities like Cleveland and Kansas City quite successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now we're really concentrating on you know, just developing the base route, Route 60. Uh, we're looking to do some promotional stuff in uh, April potentially. Um, and 
really drive ridership on, on some of those really successful corridors to make it a, into a really great service. Uh, some of the most frequent destinations for transit users are jobs um, and shopping. Mm -hmm. And so some of the places where you see the highest uh, boardings and, um, and departures are at shopping malls, for example. So Merle Hay, Valley West, Park Fair, uh, a lot of Walmarts, you know, those are major destinations. Uh, and so, again, one of the new services that we launched in November uh, is very specific to those locations uh, because they're not only pieces, places where people are going to shop and buy goods, but they're also places where people are going to work. Yes. So the new Route 52 is a crosstown route that makes it much faster to get from downtown to the western, uh, out, out to the major shopping centers on the west side. Mm -hmm. So it goes from downtown, gets on the interstate, goes to Valley West Mall, makes a few stops, back on the interstate over to Jordan Creek Parkway and down to Jordan Creek. And mm -hmm. then from there, back on the interstate to make the trip in, reserve, in reverse. Before, it took, would take you more than an hour to get from downtown out to Jordan Creek on the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now you can make that trip in about 40 minutes. Uh, so we've really cut down the time to get from those destinations. So it's much easier for people to get to some of these major destinations and much more quick. There is also the redevelopment on the south side, particularly with South Ridge Mall. Do they have a service that will be taking uh, people yes. there as well? Yes, I should have mentioned South Ridge Mall. There are Route 6 and Route 7 both operate out of, out of uh, South Ridge. Yep. So you're coming from downtown and you can go directly out to, to that? Yeah, location. if you were leaving Dart Central Station today, you could take one or two routes and get there. Okay. Well, the new Central Station has new technology, which certainly has redesigned the system to some extent. It's certainly easier to use and more efficient. We've learned both the buses and the building. Uh, so what lies ahead for DART? Is there more expansion in the future? We are, of course, building on this new foundation. The last year was really transformational in terms of opening the new station and redesigning the entire network of bus routes. And from here, we you know, want to keep building on this foundation. Uh, so in the coming year, we want to expand on the, exist on the changed routes, so run the buses more often, perhaps run them later and more often on the weekends, which we hear from people they want to be able to you know, ride at, later at night on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we're looking to do is increase our technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the major things that we're doing is developing an online trip planner. As its name suggests, this will allow you to go online, enter your origin and destination, and get automatic directions for making your trip by transit. Oh, yeah, that it, is an excellent idea. It's something that's been implemented in other cities and has shown success there and, and something that uh, we're excited to finally be introducing in, in Greater Des Moines. In conjunction with that, you're also going to be able to track your bus's uh, whereabouts in real time based on GPS technology that has been installed on our buses. So is that like a mobile app for Dart for my phone? Well, it will be a mobile site. You know, okay. we'll be able to do that at a mobile site, not an app per se, um, but you will be able to access it on your smartphone. Uh, but, you know, not everyone has a smartphone, so mm -hmm. we're also going to be able to access that information just by calling in. Oh, my. You all are really using technology to move forward. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> well, you have provided us with a wealth of information. So, um, as we close, I'd like to know where people can go to get more information. You've talked about the website, so please give us your website, telephone number, and when they can access that for information. Uh, well, thank you again for having us. Um, and we have made many improvements, and we do hope that people will take another look at riding the bus. Uh, one of our customer service representatives will be more than happy to help any of your viewers uh, plan a trip or answer their questions. Uh, the main phone line number is 515-283-8100 and our website is www.ridedart.com. Thank you very much. This has been very informative and we'll be looking forward to that new application so yes. we can track the buses. Well, Amelia, thank you. Thank you. That wraps up this edition of City Talk. I hope you'll join us again here on DMTV, City of Des Moines Cable Channel. Every month, we will bring you new information about city services and facilities. Today's program can be seen again during the replays, the dates and times now listed on your television screen. You can also watch DMTV online. Go to www.dmgov.org and click on Watch Live. We're also on YouTube at www.youtube.com 
backslash City of Des Moines, Iowa. Watch any of our TV shows anytime you want with video on demand. You'll find those links on the Public Information Office page on the City website. DMTV is provided to the City of Des Moines free of charge by Mediacom Cable. You'll find us 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the basic tier of your cable service. For more information, visit us on the web. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.